Welcome to the Mujiwara Sketches YouTube channel, buddy. In today's video, we dive deep into the journey of Zoro, the iconic swordsman of Luffy's crew. From his early days to his current strength, Zoro's path to becoming the world's strongest swordsman is nothing short of epic. Let's explore how his power has grown and what challenges lie ahead in his quest for greatness. Zoro is one of the key characters in One Piece, and fans love him very much. Zoro has always been an important part of the main story because he was the first person Luffy hired for his crew. Because Zoro was a fighter, strength has always been a big part of his personality, and it only gets better over time. Since he wants to be the world's strongest swordsman, this is what people expect of him. Zoro is very strong right now. He's still not at his best, though. Zoro still has a long way to go and a lot of promise to reach. Fans are really looking forward to the point where Zoro will be about the same level as Yanko by the end of the series. Zoro's current level of strength. Zoro has acquired great power heading into Egghead. Over the years, Zoro has only gotten better. It could be said that Zoro jumped the most during the time skip. He was a totally different person, and he was much better at using the sword. After the time skip in One Piece, Zoro showed off his skills with different sword arts in hockey, which he had learned during the time skip. In Dress Rosa, for example, Zoro easily beat Pika, who was a high-ranking member of the Don Quixote Pirates. In Wano, Zoro had to show what he could really do. He had to go up against strong figures like Kamazo and, in the Onigashima part of the story, even Kaido. It was expected that Zoro would lose his fight with Kaido. However, when he fought King later, he got yet another power-up. Zoro got this power-up from the blade he was given in the land of Ueno, Enma. It might be the most important one of all. One can draw Haki out of their body with the Enma, which is a very strong blade. Zoro let this blade soak up as much Haki as it wanted without controlling it. This brought out his hidden conqueror's Haki and let him use a more advanced version of this technique right away. Not only was Zoro stronger than King, but he was also stronger than Kaido's three right-hand men. With the power to use Conqueror's Haki Infusion, Zoro is already one of the strongest people in One Piece. On the other hand, he can only use this power for a short time because it could end up taking over his life. Still, it looks like Zoro has kept a good handle on this skill ever since, because in Egghead, he showed enough skill to fight Luchi and beat him in a fight. Zoro's Future Opponents Zoro still has powerful enemies left to topple. If One Piece keeps going, fans will definitely get to see Zoro fight a lot of strong enemies. Fans expect Zoro to fight tough people, and from now on, he will have to deal with a lot of them. Plus, since One Piece is now near the final saga, Zoro will only fight the strongest enemies from now on. Because Zoro has already beaten King, all of his next big fights will be against people stronger than a Yonko first mate. At some point in the future, Zoro might fight an admiral of the marines, and this could be the next big step on his way to becoming the world's strongest swordsman. Fans know Dracul Myhawk is the world's best swordsman and Zoro's final goal. From then on, Zoro will have to fight him. After beating Myhawk, Zoro would be at a very high level of strength. It will be dangerous to be around Zoro if he wins the title of world's strongest swordsman. If someone can beat Myhawk, they are definitely good enough to be compared to the Anko. Because of this, Zoro will definitely hit the same level as the Emperors of the Sea. Yanko Level Zoro Zoro will be as strong as an Emperor eventually. To become as powerful as the Yanko, Zoro has to get there, but fans may still be curious about how he does it. After all, Zoro just got the option to use Conqueror's Hockey Infusion, but he doesn't even look close to being at that level yet. It's not hard to figure out the answer to this question. The first thing Zoro needs to do is get better at controlling Conqueror's Haki. Odin said himself that he could use Enma's power like it was a feather. For Zoro, this is too much trouble, and if you use it for more than a few minutes, he might die. As soon as Zoro gets a better handle on Enma, he will automatically be stronger. But that's not all there is to him. Zoro still needs to get one more power up. The last one is making his swords black. Zoro will need to make a lot of improvement in that area by the end of One Piece. As soon as Zoro makes his swords black, they will get stronger and raise his rank. Zoro will be at his strongest at that point, and he will also be able to use his other skills to their fullest, like the King of Hell form or even the Ashura form. 
When put together, these abilities should be enough for Zoro to fight Myhawk and maybe even beat him. It goes without saying that Zoro will be Yonko level when he gets these skills. Zoro won't be the best person in One Piece, there will still be people stronger than him. But he will be on the same level as the Emperor's, which is something he has worked extraordinarily hard to achieve. With his new skills, Zoro will continue to be the world's strongest swordsman. Besides that, he will have kept his promise to Kuina, and he will also be in the best situation to help Luffy become Pirate King. Achieving the same level of power as the Yonko won't be easy for Zoro, but he can do it, and fans can be sure that Zoro will deliver at the end of One Piece. As the story moves forward, readers can just wait and see how he changes as he gets closer to the throne that Myhawk is currently warming up for him. Summary and Highlights As time goes on, Zoro gains new abilities and skills that help him become the world's strongest swordsman. Fans can expect Zoro to meet even tougher foes, maybe even ones as strong as Yanko. Zoro grows as he learns new skills, like the Conqueror's Hockey, and makes his swords blacker. As we wrap up, it's clear that Zoro's evolution is far from over. With new skills like Conqueror's Hockey and the potential blackening of his swords, he's on track to rival the might of the Yanko. Stay tuned for more updates on Zoro's journey, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for all things One Piece. Until next time, keep believing in Zoro's rise to legendary status. Thank you very much for visiting the Mujiwara Sketches YouTube channel, buddy. We hope you enjoy our review analysis. Don't forget to subscribe to continue joining us on our joyful journey in the world of anime. If you have any wishes, questions, or suggestions for our next videos, feel free to express your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for your support, and until we meet again. See you next time, buddy. What is One Piece anime? One Piece is a manga and anime story about a young boy named Monkey D. Luffy who wants to be the king of the pirates in the world. As a child, he eats a devil fruit, a strange plant that makes him able to stretch like rubber. Before the show starts, Luffy goes out into the world for the first time and starts to gather a group of pirates. The main group grows over time, but it starts with Luffy, Nami the Navigator, and a swordsman named Roronoa Zoro. At some point, Luffy and his friends are known as the Straw Hat Pirates, and they go on many exciting adventures across the ocean. One Piece is a lot of fun because it's silly. Luffy goes from island to island around the world in the series. Each island has its own setting and theme. It's a pretty fantastical world full of animals that look like people, live skeletons, and other delightfully strange things. Within moments the group is in a winter scene, and the next they are on a tropical island full of giants. The show is full of silly and bright details. For example, Zoro holds a sword in his mouth, a scary military boss wears a cute bulldog hat. And people don't use phones to talk to each other instead, they use special transponder snails that can send and receive messages. Luffy is a carefree person who just wants to eat a tasty meal and laugh at bad jokes. Even though there are some funny parts in the series, a lot of One Piece is about freedom. During his travels, Luffy often takes up guns to help his friends and encourages others to do the same against pirates and government-backed military occupations. The characters in Luffy and his crew get stronger with each fight, which is typical for shonen manga. A lot of the story is about how Luffy beats a problem that seemed impossible to solve and finds some kind of secret power. After each fight, Luffy and his team get stronger and move closer to his main goal, which is to find the One Piece. Why is it called One Piece? The first part of both the manga and the anime shows that Pirate King Gold D. Roger is telling the truth about the mythical wealth called the One Piece. One Piece is the name of the show because Luffy wants to find the One Piece and become the next Pirate King. One of Luffy's main goals in the show is mentioned in the show's title. What is the One Piece? The answer to this question is still one of the biggest secrets in the series. It's been more than 1,000 episodes, and we still don't know what One Piece is. We know that the One Piece is the name of the treasure that Gold D. Roger collected on his travels because of details in the manga. We still don't know a lot about the treasure, though. There are a lot of ideas from fans about what the One Piece is, but we still don't know what it is or even if it's real. The One Piece could just be the friends Luffy makes along the way, 